everyone. Today we'll be looking at two different components of language providing practical examples for each. These components are morphology and syntax. To start off, we will be discussing morphology. So what is morphology? It is the study of letters and sounds combined to make meaningful units. A morpheme is a meaningful unit of language that cannot be further divided. First, we have bound morphemes, which can further be divided into two categories, affixes and bound roots. Bound morphemes can also be seen as the root of a word. They are roots that cannot be used on their own. For example, sieve. The word sieve cannot stand on its own. It is not a word. In order for it to become a word, it needs to be followed by other words, for example, receive and deceive. You cannot save something. Affixes are morphemes that can be added to the beginning and the end of words. They can be derivational or inflectional. Derivational affixes are affixes that when added to a word create a new word. They are called derivational affixes because a new word is derived when they are added to the original word. Many times these newly created words belong to a new grammatical category. Like for example, adding the suffix er to teach changes it from the verb teach to the noun teacher. By contrast, inflectional changes the form of words in order to express grammar. For example, adding ing to the word speak changes it to speaking, a different grammatical form. Secondly, we have free morphemes. Free morphemes are not dependent on any other morpheme to create their own meaning. Open class content words such as girl, fish and tree are all free morphemes. Closed class function words such as and, that and for are free morphemes also. Development for morphological skills is best achieved with explicit teaching. Explicit teaching is a strategy used by teachers to meet the needs of their students and engage them in unambiguous, clearly articulated teaching. When taught, morphology improves vocabulary and reading achievement and can also help with spelling and pronunciation of words. Not all students will develop morphological skills as easily as others. These students may benefit more from explicit teaching. The next component of language that I will be looking at is syntax. Syntax is the order of words within a sentence. And it's important because we need to know how to structure our sentences the right way so that we can communicate well. Take a look at the following sentence. Awesome my teacher is. Does that sound right? Definitely not. To fix it, we move awesome to the end of the sentence. My teacher is awesome. There are two main parts that make up a sentence. In the English language, most sentences are structured with a noun phrase and a verb phrase. Take a look at this sentence. The man bought a car. If you take a look at this sentence, you will notice it's broken down into two main parts. The noun phrase, referring to the man, and the verb phrase, which is bought a car. 
This sentence is the most basic sentence structure in the English language. It has one subject, a noun, and one verb. Now let's take a look at noun phrases. A noun phrase must include a noun. It can also include a determiner, a quantifier, an adjective phrase, and a prepositional phrase. First, we will be looking at determiners. A determiner is a reference word, such as the, that, this, at, and an. Like, for example, the student and the teacher. Quantifiers are words that tell you how much. For example, words such as one, five, and some. Next are adjective phrases. Adjective phrases are words made up, are made up of words that describe a noun. For example, happy teacher, tall teacher. Lastly, prepositional phrases are words that show a position or a relationship of space. For example, I want to work in a classroom or with a friend. These are phrases that state with preposition. They describe where and with whom the individual wants to work. Now we can add these parts to the noun. The one very rich man in a suit. Now let's break the sentence down and create a syntax tree. The determiner of the sentence is the. quantifier of the sentence is one. The adjective phrase of the sentence is very rich. The noun is man. And the prepositional phrase is in a suit. A noun phrase only has to include a noun. It can, but it doesn't have to include all of these other parts. Next, we will be looking at verb phrases. A verb phrase must include a verb. It can also include a noun phrase, a prepositional phrase, and an adverb phrase. When noun phrases and verb phrases are put together, this is the result. So like before, the determiner is the, the quantifier is one, adjective phrase is very rich. The noun is man. The prepositional phrase is in a suit. The verb is bought. The second noun phrase is a car. The prepositional phrase 
the second prepositional phrase is in a store with his family. And the adverb phrase is only two days ago. So the new sentence is, the one very rich man in a suit bought a car in a store with his family only two days ago. A great way to introduce syntax to students is with the cat in the hat books, as they present all different types of noun phrases and verb phrases. A challenge may be for students to find nouns, verbs, determiners, noun phrases, verb phrases, etc. and present them to the rest of the class. They'll not only have fun doing so, but they'll learn a lot too. Thanks for watching!